Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just read Franny by J.D. Salinger. This is the first part of the two stories in here from uh, Franny and Zoe. I absolutely love these little additions and these covers. It's iconic to me, the little brown uh, publishing. And um, I just read Franny again. I've, I've read it several times. Uh, I don't believe I've read it in my 30s. So uh, the first time I read it, I was probably a very late teenager or in my 20s, and I probably read it a handful of times in my early 20s. And now uh, revisiting it, the reason I'm reading it again is my, my girlfriend just read it, and she reread re it um, also. So uh, she, she's read it before and um, was inclined to pick it up, and she loved it. And uh, just listening to her... T uh, talk about it and give her thoughts made me want to uh, read it again. And it's almost hard to pin down um, why it is so um, compelling. It's such an interesting story, and the actual plot is very straightforward. It's just um, two young people, two very, uh, two young, very well-educated, intelligent um, emotionally complex uh, young people in the mid 20th century, upper class, um, boyfriend, girlfriend. It seems like they go to different schools, uh, have to have a letter correspondence, and then they um, meet uh, whenever they can. And the story is them um, meeting after a period of time and having lunch together. And that, that's essentially the whole uh, the whole plot of the story, but there's so much going on, and it's so strange. We have we have uh, Franny, and then uh, her boyfriend Lane, and it begins with um, a very sunny, cool day uh, with uh, Lane wearing his Burberry raincoat, waiting for Franny to arrive. And while he's waiting, he's reading. Um, a letter that Franny had sent him, and Salinger uh, makes a decision uh, very often to allow us to read letters in full. And so we, we read the letter that uh, Franny had sent to Lane. And it's um, confused and um, quite distressing as, as far as um, the, the strength of their relationship. Uh, Franny at the beginning of the letter talks about how she loved uh, the most recent letter that Lane had sent towards uh, the end of the letter. She's saying that she hates the letter that he had sent and she's feeling uh, confused and uh, restless and um, has concerns about um, feeling judged and picked on and being uh, criticized and overanalyzed by Lane and also expressing um, excitement and anticipation um, with their uh, coming reunion, that the meeting that they're about to happen, uh, they're, that, that they're about to have. And so um, Franny is in an uneasy state, and Lane knows that. Um, there's aspects of their relationship um, that maybe um, need addressing, and need to be uh, talked about um, openly and in a, in a healthy way and things like that. So Franny arrives and uh, they have a whole day of activities, different things that they're going to be doing. They want to get lunch first, but um, they're going to be meeting with friends. They're going to be go going out to um, other engagements. The whole story is going to be set at this uh, restaurant. They go to a restaurant and I think what makes it so interesting is uh, they, they sit down and have a conversation, but both of them are having different conversations. And they're not, uh, it's, it's as if two different conversations are happening at the same time. And neither of them are having the real conversation that they should be having. It starts with Lane talking about his school. Uh, he should be asking Franny, um, how is she doing? 
asking about the letter, uh, what's on her mind. Instead, he acts almost as if she, she asks, did, did you get the letter? And he just says, uh, well, wh which letter? What letter? The letter that he had been reading while, she, uh, while he was waiting for her pretends as if he doesn't know what she's talking about. He says, oh, yes, I read that letter, and quickly goes into um, his own schooling and um, how, how he wrote this amazing paper and um, it's an essay on Flaubert and how he chooses the, the, just the right perfect words and how other writers like uh, Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and Shakespeare uh, didn't have to do that. They could just write. So what's, what's going on with Flaubert? Um, there's so many aspects of the story that are really interesting to read now as a 38-year-old. So um, on, on the one level, probably the more important level, is the dynamic of this relationship and how to handle, um, how, how, how to have a healthy relationship and um, to be emotionally uh, open and available and uh, to be um, considerate and patient and forgiving and things like that. But also to, to re go back and read this, now that I've read um, so much more and nearly all of the references, not only do I know, but I've, I've read the works. So uh, Flaubert and Stendhal and Tos uh, Dostoevsky and Tolstoy and Shakespeare and um, the Upanishads and <laughs> all these things, uh, to, to not only have, uh, know the reference, but uh, to have read them and uh, have at, at least a basic understanding of, of those works. It's uh, just very fun, it's very, very cool uh, to feel like a more experienced uh, person, but also a more experienced reader. But he's um, kind of humble bragging about this, this paper that he wrote. And Franny's responses are distracted and uh, obtuse, and they're, they're not lining up with, um, with, with what Lane is saying. And Lane is either dismissing her or is oblivious to um, what's, what's going on in this interaction. Meanwhile, it's lunchtime and they're drinking uh, martinis and smoking countless cigarettes. They're, they're both just smoking cigarettes after cigarette. Uh, and Franny gets worked up. She, she has to go to the, to the bathroom. Um, they're, they're just not on the same page. And she cries for five minutes. She's in the bathroom crying. Lane is just sitting um, in the restaurant um, trying to look uh, casual and cool while he moderately uh, sips on his martini. Uh, Franny comes back out. Uh, they order their food. She orders a chicken sandwich. He orders uh, snails and octopus and frog's legs. Uh, he's kind of looking down on her. Uh, her order saying, really? A chicken sandwich? Uh, there, there's a waiter that intermittently uh, comes over. And at some point, Franny's taking things out of her bag. And um, different effects are collecting on the table. And she puts down this green book, uh, green cloth bound book that uh, she was holding in her hand at the platform for when, when they met. Uh, she had it out when she was in the bathroom crying, and now now it's on the table. Um, up, up till this point, um, w when Franny was talking, she, she's just um, kind of b bewildered and, and frantic and um, cynical, ha has this extreme um, pessimism of, of the world and how much like Holden Caulfield um, was looking for purity um, and, and, and innocence and found that the world was um, corrupt and, and fake and uh, talks about these uh, professors that she has that are uh, considered to be poets and she's saying, well, they're not real poets. They don't, have, they don't possess real genius. And um, Lane is saying maybe she's being too, uh, being too harsh. 
But finally, that this book is on the table, and it's called the uh, the Way of the Pilgrim, I believe. It's a um, a, a, a religious, spiritual um, Russian tale by an anonymous author, and Franny starts describing uh, th 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 this book of a um, uh, a Russian peasant, a, a pilgrim, who talks about um, reading the Bible and parts of the Bible that talk about praying incessantly to get to a state where uh, your ever every waking moment is consumed with prayer. And he is on this pilgrimage to find out. Um, by um, other holy men and uh, re re religious scholars, how do you do this? And Franny is really interested in this, and it's it's a, a moment in the sh in the story where um, she's being very open about something that she's really interested in, a b book that she's reading, and uh, Lane is just ignoring her every time it cuts back to Lane. He's cracking open his frog's legs, and he's chewing and eating his snails and sipping on his drink and um, getting the waiter's attention and completely ignoring, not not, uh, not participating in the conversation that Fran is having. Both of them, every time one is talking, the other one is on another plane talking about something else. They're not truly um, talking to one another. She, she finishes um, talking about the book, and as if, as if this whole um, lunch conversation was a contest, um, throughout the whole story, Lane is acting as if um, there's a winning side. And he, he wants to win the conversation. He wants to be right. He, he wants to um, show how she's being... Um, illogical and irrational and um, um, through his own uh, rationale and intelligence he's going to prove her wrong. What is this nonsense about praying incessantly? What, what is this about uh, being closer to God? And um, Don't you realize how silly this is? And um, It's just, it, it, it all comes to a head. They're, they're just both um, not in the same place. Uh, Franny gets back up, um, presumably to, to rush to the bathroom. At this point, she didn't eat. Um, Lane, meanwhile, has been drinking his martinis, he's eating his snails, and eating his frog's legs, um, having a glass of water, having coffee, smoking all the while. Franny has only been drinking these martinis, which she follows up immediately with a glass of milk, <laughs> which is not a good... I imagine not a good comb combination, um, and smoking incessant, uh, smoking uh, cigarettes incessantly, just w chain smoking one after another, playing with her cigarettes, playing with the ash. Um, doesn't eat her chicken sandwich. Can't even look uh, the waiter in the eye. So she has an empty stomach. She hasn't had breakfast. Uh, all she has in her uh, belly is um, gin and milk. And then all, all of this uh, tobacco smoke. She gets up, falters, and faints um, in the restaurant. And when she comes to, she's in the back of the manager's office. Lane now is fully present. Uh, he, he's uh, looking her directly in the eyes, trying to um, make sure that she's okay. And he, he, it's the, the first moment in the story that he's now present. He's in the present um, looking at Franny. She's embarrassed, um, doesn't feel well, asks for a glass of water. Um, Lane uh, says that he will go get the glass of water, but also wants to um, tidy up some of the other um, uh, necessaries, what he believes to be necessaries wants to make sure that he pays the check, uh, wants to collect the things at the table. Um, so still not um, not being right where he should be, maybe a little bit closer, but still um, 
slightly disappointing in his action. And it ends with um, just this beautiful description of uh, Franny alone um, after all this whole ordeal in the back of the manager's office on a sofa. And um, the only thing that's described is that her mouth is silently, um, rhythmically moving as if she's praying incessantly. And that's the story. The wonderful thing about um, Franny and uh, J.D. Salinger is the, the more that you read uh, the other works, um, the, 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 the more substance gets folded in to individual works. And so we know that Franny is part of the Glass family. And um, there's uh, Seymour Glass and Zoe and um, a whole handful of these um, precocious young children that were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. They were all part of this um, quiz show called um, It's a Wise Child, I believe. And d different um, ch children were, were even studied. Um, they, they all became these great, uh, great people, uh, uh, brilliant. They were all uh, these br brilliant people, grew up to be brilliant. And also, we know, emotionally damaged. Uh, Franny, uh, Franny's one of the younger of the class children. Seymour is the oldest. And at the time of this story, Seymour has already committed suicide, which had this avalanche effect on the entire family. And so reading Franny, I, I know some things that are um, strictly outside of this story. One, Franny, most likely, is the smarter of the two in this story. Uh, Lane likens himself to the, being the voice of re reason and the, the more intelligent one. Franny uh, is significantly more intelligent, for whatever that's worth. And she's also carrying a huge amount of emotional baggage that um, doesn't directly come into play into this story, but um, as, as a reader that knows her whole family, um, I have a much better understanding of her whole life outside of just this relationship um, that she's having, this relationship and this specific interaction uh, that she's having with Lane. Adds a lot of power and, and emotional depth um, and, and complexity to um, what, strictly speaking, is a, a very straightforward, simple um, description of uh, a, a singular lunch. It's just two people having lunch together. And so much happens. At, at the table and away from the table. Just uh, a lovely and, and strange and uh, sad. Um, so that's Franny. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll read uh, Zoe. I started at the beginning of it. I think I'll read it. Uh, so Franny by J.D. Salinger. Uh, let me know if you've read it. I love it. I'm glad that I read it again. So um, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like and take care.